This is my Capra, but it's got a new body. This is the Endura cage. It's just a cheap thing, but it's a whole exoskeleton cage thing. It comes with its own uh, skid, but I didn't use the skid it came with. So this is a bit of an Endura video. In fact, it's very much an Endura video. And let me show you why and what I've done with it. Because this is my new tough truck, four wheel steering, 5.4 inch tired monster that's going to be comping. So let me show you all about it. Okay, so the cage comes in four, three or four colors. It's a very easy build. It comes with really decent instructions. So Endura are really making good stuff. Now I've uh, taken an existing 3D printable battery tray and servo mount. And in the slicer, I cut it to make it shorter so it would fit. And we're using 90 mil shocks on the front and a, um, a Capra, it's an AliExpress everything, this thing. We've got a Capra front axle and the stock Capra plastic rear axle from my original Capra kit. I've got a Holmes Hobby servo at each end. We've got metal links throughout. Now, I made a community post not too long ago about this. Um, I'll put it on the screen because I can't really show you easily, but it's an acrylic case transmission. You see it in there? And it has a uh, Rhino uh, ESC and it's got a Rhino Outrunner motor attached to it. Uh, it's been an interesting build. I've actually made it uh, shorter at the front, longer at the back. Not by a huge amount, but this is the result of my tuning. And we have the Boom Racing Pro wheels, which I really like because they're adjustable in so many ways. What I wanted to explore with you in this video was just how good the AliExpress stuff is becoming. I'm... It's been quite a thrilling ride for Endura, I think. Uh, one thing that's nice is that they're making their own stuff. It's not there has been some cloning stuff in the past and you might see there's not a lot of that on my channel. I don't really like supporting the cloning stuff, but the stuff that they're making now is really good. Um, this cage, you can't get it anywhere else but Endura or, you know, Endura resellers. It's really cool. There is a battery tray that I've inverted and just put the radio on uh, because I've moved my little battery down to the front here where, where the weight is on the axle. So this gives me a tough truck build. So if you've seen my tough truck how-to, for uh, competitions. This is the latest uh, version of, of my entry for that. My only concern is that the transmission may not be up to it. We had the outdrives, they're all press stamped onto the, the gears are uh, pressed onto the axles. So once they slip, they're done. Unless you use, uh, what was it? I think it was Loctite 680 was, was the one to get. Anyway, we'll come to that if we have to, but I've just built the geometry myself and it's come out really nicely. So today I'm just gonna give it a shakedown drive. So let's see how it crawls. Now, if you wanna build one of these yourself, you don't actually need to buy a Capra to start with. Let's see if we can make sure this is angled down. You don't need to buy a Capra to start with. Cause really the motor, the transmission, the body obviously even the axles and servos you can really build all of this separately and it would have been a lot cheaper the magic thing for me here is my samurai mt4 because i've got rear steering here and front here so we're just running off a small 450 milliamp hour servo and look you can see the outrunner here see it turning when it's going how many kb is this was it 1450 1470 kV. Now my tough truck rules specify 5.4 as the biggest diameter for tires and you can be on 2.2 or 1.9 tires. So I've gone with 2.2 and they have to be uh, they have to be a realistic tread and I've cut this down just like on the real tough truck. So I'm not setting out to prove its capability here, but I just thought we might have a play and just see what it's capable of. Let's, well, let's see what we can do. It's only a small battery, that 450 milliamp hour battery. So uh, we're not gonna get a hugely long time. Look at that, crab walking being ever so useful. And these brilliant home servos are so strong. I've kept the weight as low as I can. And I really like this transmission. It's just a shame that the uh, gears are pressed on rather than, uh, gee, that's close, isn't it? It's a shame they're pressed on rather than uh, having an axle 
through them, which is really what you want. The deluxe gearboxes have the axles through them. I wonder if we can hook over the top here. This is not a crawler like a pro crawler. Let me just back it up. We're gonna move out and then come around. So crab walking really helps too. Gee, it's nice to be back talking to you guys again. I've missed it. Here we go. If we can... It's gonna be a close thing. Let me see here. Nope. We might need to angle around from this side. This is good practice for me anyway. <laughs> Jeez. One thing I've been internalizing in recent months is really getting that four wheel steering sorted. It comes pretty naturally now. And the difference between crabbing and uh, four, four wheel steering is, is large, so it's good to have that. Yeah, both the front and rear servos are direct drive 12 volt. I'm running on 3S here. The Rhino ESC is actually really nice, and these Holmes servos are such a nice combination. In the last few years, there have been some other servos that have become really popular, I've noticed, on YouTube, but I haven't used them like the Reefs or the N something BC, whatever they are. I really like the homes, so I've stuck with them. One thing I'm not sure about is the tires on this. They're the Super Swampers from ProLine. ProLine? No, Boggers, I'm sorry, the TSL Boggers is what they are. There we go. So crabbing, yeah, I couldn't have done that with straight axles, with uh, a straight rear axle. Not straight, with, uh, without rear steering is what I'm trying to say. Just trying to distribute the weight nicely. There we go, there we go. Look at that. And we'll bring it butt around. That's cool, eh? Top speed is not high, but it's enough. This kind of truck, I mean, no kind of truck's gonna do that gap, except a super. Hang on, full of steering. But let's have a go, because why not? Two schools of thought here, going quick or going slow. Ah, yeah, no, we're not gonna try it. Don't really wanna snap an axle, do we? Well, I'm very happy with this. <laughs> it's quite a lot of fun to drive, I tell you that. Now, the nice thing about these outrunners is that they're not censored, so you can have a much more simple system. Censored is probably superior, but just given the way that these motors work, you can see it just spinning away in there. It's just really smooth. Beautiful. Well, it's been a minute since I recorded most of this video. Uh, I'm actually leaving for the ECCF in just a few days at time of filming. And you might see that this thing looks a little different. I've changed to a new set of boggers and cut them differently. I didn't do a very good job. They're not particularly even, but I didn't need it to be even. I just wanted it to be soft but to have side lugs where we can actually get a little bit of sideways grab. Um, I drove with someone at the last comp whose tires were cut like this, but more neatly. Thanks Eric for the idea. And that was great. The other thing is I've actually been developing my own uh, wheel inserts to replace foams. Uh, I've got the equivalent of dual stage. They're printed from TPU and you're gonna be able to find these on rctnt.com. The fronts are a bit softer, the, the rears are a bit firmer. I've got like five different designs and I've I've chosen these because I, I developed them just for these tires for this kind of truck. So for a fairly lightweight little body. And the other thing I wanted to mention was Enduro has two, uh, two of these buggy kind of frames. This is the smaller of the two. There's a slightly larger one as well. Now I like the smaller one. Um, I like that it's the geometry is actually pretty similar on both, but I like the lower weight on this. The last thing to mention is that I've also swapped out the shocks. Now, Scott from USA, thank you, Scott, sent me these. I'd never looked at the desert lizards before. I know they've even become a bit of a meme on the, <laughs> on the internet for crawlers, but I liked that you could stick whatever oil you like in it, and they come with three different firmnesses in foams, uh, sorry, in springs. And I wanted a little bit more articulation. I just wanted to fiddle with it a bit. Now the back on this is actually fairly firm. The front's a bit softer. 
and I think overall it works quite well. So we're just going to try uh, a couple of bits of driving here. I'm going to capture it. I'll share a little bit of that with you right now on camera just so you can see what it's like. It's a little, I'm hoping it's going to be a bit better and I really hope so because this is my very last chance. It's a sunny day. It's basically winter here now in Melbourne because we just changed from summer to winter like that and I'm leaving in a couple of days so I'm out of time. Anyway, here it is, updated. Well, as it turned out, I didn't like the tires. So I've returned to what I had, which is just every second, all the small lugs removed, basically. They could use some sideways cuts as well to help stop sliding, but I don't have the time to test that before I go away. So I'm just gonna drive the six again now and make sure I'm happy. I've just grabbed a tiny amount of time here to film this. And I got out here just before and realized, oh yeah, last week I lost a screw and <laughs> I had to hurry up and fix the axle. Anyway, you're going to see that uh, four-wheel steering makes a humongous difference. Even when I've just come in cold, I haven't driven all week. My mind has been necessarily elsewhere. And still, look how smooth it is. Just beautiful. Problem one. Problem two. Now, the overall dimensions of this vehicle are very similar to the Capra. And remember, my Capra was a kit front wheel steering only. This was before they released the uh, four wheel steering Capra. So I'm using an aftermarket alloy axle for the front and the original plastic front axle in the rear. Into problem three, this is crabbing. And then we reverse the front steering and we can change the vehicle's direction so easily. And to remind anyone who hasn't seen this for a while, there's my rear steer here. This is the Samoa MT4. But you can do this with a number of other vehicles. Another, a number of other radios, I'm sorry. All right, so we're gonna... There we go. I crabbed to keep the vehicle where I wanted it and then steered to fix it. And look at that, beautiful. Now there are some kangaroos very cautiously watching me here. They're having dinner. Sorry to disturb you guys. This is problem four. Now this Enjora kit isn't just an Enjora kit. Like I said earlier in the video, we're also using that acrylic transmission. And this is a great combination. I, I quite like it. Oh, these kangaroos got uncomfortable. They left, understandable. There we go. All right, let's keep the camera with us. There we go. So these Holmes servos being directly 12 volt, both of them running straight off that little 450 milliamp hour 3S battery, means I have all the power and speed I need to take this car where I want it to go. And the other thing I'm noticing is the, uh, the grip on these tires is defeating my direct voltage servo. It's a great servo, but when the wheels are this big, it's uh, it's really got to work for it. I'm not actually sure I like this better. So what we need is for the tyres to deform more, more than they currently are. There we go. Problem five. I can see the tie rod once lengthening a little bit too because the wheels are towed in just a little. And really, you want neutral toe or I guess slight toe out is fine, but you don't want toe in really on any car in the front, but as crawlers, yeah, it's not ideal for accuracy. Anyway, five was a breeze. And lastly, problem six. I haven't been too sure about setting up my tough truck. I wasn't quite happy with the Capra. I mean, I like the Capra a lot, but it just, it was still a little bit heavy for me. This frame is so lightweight. It weighs so little that the geometry now that was already great with the Capra 
it's kind of like supercharged. Gosh, it's nice. It just, it's such a lightweight thing. Now, don't discount the value of this little outrunner motor as well, wherever it is. Can't even see it now. So this little outrunner motor down here, as well as this lightweight transmission, all three of those things work together really, really well. Well, thanks for watching my video, guys. This is my tough truck for competition for 2024. If you'd like more information about it, uh, we have melbournecompcrawlers.com.au. That's our local club. We have a description of the tough truck class there, and we've been using that on the eastern seaboard in Australia for a couple of years now. Uh, Steve Price of Pricey's Custom Crawlers, he does all the, um, all the shocks and the links. A lot of you guys will know him if you're really into the comp stuff. Uh, he's in Queensland, I believe, and this is his class, his design. Uh, and so we've all adopted it, and it's a lot of fun. So great job, Stevo, for that. Well done, mate. I'm going to see you up in ECCF very soon. And in fact, you won't even see this video, Steve, until I've already driven this. Uh, so we'll see. I guess we'll see how it goes, won't we? Thanks for watching, guys. Throw me a like, and I'll catch you again right here on RCTNT. Cheers.